Mark chapter 15. We're going to read several verses this morning, and I want to talk to you about something that was said at the cross that we have to make a decision for every day. If you would, would you stand with me as we read Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. Everyone standing in honor of God's word. Mark chapter 15. If you need a Bible right underneath the seat in front of you, you can find that. Matthew, Mark. Mark is the second book of the New Testament. You can find it there. Mark chapter 15. Everyone standing right over here. Help me out in this section right here. Have them stand up in honor of God's word. Thank you. Mark chapter 15 and verse 21. The Bible says, And they compel one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they bring him unto the place Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. They gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. That's important that he didn't receive it. When they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, whatever man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him, and the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. With him they crucified two thieves, and one on his right hand, the other on his left. The scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. They that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads, and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple, and buildest it in three days, save thyself. And come down from the cross. Likewise also the, with the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let Christ the king of Israel descend now from the cross. That we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. There's a little phrase in these verses that they said, they said that, they, that, we may, that they may see and believe. I want to take those words, I want to reverse it. Believe and see. Amen. Believe and see. Father, take these next few minutes. Oh, thank you for the several hundred inside of this auditorium right now. We are grateful for that. Grateful, God, that we come to celebrate your resurrection but Lord, there's something that we've got to do. That resurrection means nothing if we do not accept you as our personal Savior. I pray that every person under my voice would listen for the next few minutes. Understand, we won't be long, but we need to get this truth if we're going to settle our eternity in heaven. Would you use me now this morning to help your people, please? In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Jesus, follow me very carefully, Jesus was being taken up to the top of Golgotha. They called it the place of a skull. The reason why it was the place of a skull, many a person had died on that hill. But this person was different than any other person. This was the Son of God. They did not believe He was the Son of God, but He was the one who died to pay for the sins of mankind. While they took him, they stripped him of his robes, and then they put nails. We all, know this. we all know what happened. They put nails through his hands and his feet. They lifted that cross, and they dropped the cross in a hole. The Bible teaches us that every bone in his body fell out of joint. And you can imagine if you ever had an arm or something fall out of joint, the pain that went through the body of our Savior. And as he's there hanging on that cross, the Bible says that we just read, they tried to offer him wine mingled with myrrh. That was a painkiller. Jesus could not take a painkiller because he was suffering our eternity for us. He had to be the one that took this whole pain and the suffering that you and I would take as he hung there on that cross. 
Can I tell you, as I look at this, at this all of a sudden, they, then comes the mockers. Um, Pilate wrote a little inscription, all in capital letters, the king of the Jews. He was, kind of, he was mocking him, but he didn't realize he was the king of the Jews. He didn't understand. He's not just the king of the Jews. He's the king of anybody who will accept him as their personal savior. He will be your king if you choose Jesus Christ to be your king today. He's hanging there on the cross. They try to offer him the myrrh. He refused that myrrh. He says, no, I have to pay for the sins of mankind. Yeah, then something happened. The Bible says the chief priest came. If you look down here, they, the, there's, there's thieves around him. And the chief priest, said, the thieves said, save thyself and come down from the cross. The chief priest came to mock. These were the religious leaders of the day. These were the yuckety yucks that knew everything about religion. You know, the ones that looked down at you and I. These are the ones that looked down at us, and here they are. They come to Jesus, and they made this statement. They said, they said, let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross. They're saying, if you're really the king, why don't you come down? And they said, if you, if, when we see you come down, then we'll believe you're king. Ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what Satan wants. Yeah. Satan wants us to wait to see until we believe. But God says you have to believe before you see. It's been the battle throughout the ages going back to the Garden of Eden that Satan said to Adam and Eve, why don't you take of this fruit and you will see that you become as gods. And God says, no, don't take of that fruit. You've got to believe that I'm God and you've got to believe that I'm the one that has told you what to do. But they did not. And they went to see and to try to believe. But when they saw, get this now, sin passed upon all men and sin entered into the world because they tried to see before believing. I think in the Bible, I think of Moses, the Bible says that the Israelites were out in the wilderness and they were, they'd sinned against God and God had sent these fiery serpents that they were biting people and people were beginning to die. And the Bible says that God told Moses, Moses, take one of those serpents. Thank God I'm not Moses because everybody would have died right now. I don't like snakes. Somebody say amen. But he said, take that snake, and he says, and put it on a rod, and he says, and, and, and put brass around it, and hold it up. And he says, any time someone is bit by one of those serpents, if they'll just look to that brazen serpent, he says, they'll live. John 3, 14 says about that. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever, what, believeth in him should not perish but have what everlasting life god says you have to look first you got to believe first and believe that jesus christ is the son of god and when you believe you'll see that jesus can save you from your sins that wasn't all god says man man's desire is to see his life changed first i can't tell you how many times i've talked to people and they say when i Change my life, then I'll get saved. That's not going to happen. Because you can't change your life. You need God to change your life. God says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. We try to make ourselves the new creature, and I can't make myself the new creature because I'm the old creature. I'm the one who's filled with sin. I'm the one who needs a Savior. I need the Savior living inside of me to change me from the inside out. Oh, can I tell you this morning, I thank God, I serve a God, that he says if you just accept Christ, he said I'll change you from the inside out, and you'll find out he is the risen Savior that lives on the inside. I'll change my life first and I'll see God says, no, you accept Christ and you just believe and then you'll see how he changes your life. Can I tell you this morning, God says, believe and see. Psalm 34, 8 says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How many times has someone tried to give you food and say, why don't you just taste it? Huh? I, I, my wife's chocolate chip cookies are the best cookies in all the world. 
She asked me the other day, she asked me a, a foolish statement. She says, you want some cookies? I said, yeah, that'd be great. She says, do you want peanut butter? Do you want cinnamon? She, and she mentioned oatmeal cookies. I, I don't have oatmeal. I'm not a horse. I don't eat oatmeal. <laughs> Somebody help me out on that one right there. I'm just not an oatmeal guy. And she, she kind of left the real one out, you know, chocolate chip cookies. She left it out, and I said, you missed one. I said, I'm waiting to hear it. Just standing right there, waiting to hear it. She goes, chocolate chip cookies. I said, yep, I want chocolate chip cookies. Amen. Now, you know, when, when, you, when you taste, you say, oh, your wife's chocolate chip cookies aren't the best. I wish I had enough for everybody here this morning. You taste that thing coming out of the oven when it's nice and warm. She knows when to pull it out. She pulls it out right before it's done where it's still gooey on the inside. It takes a couple of hands to kind of shovel it inside your mouth. Somebody say amen right now. Yeah, and, and you just kind of put it in, and man, that just thing just kind of melts inside of your mouth. Man, you taste and you see, this is the best chocolate chip cookie in all the world. Yeah. Would you testify to that, Brother Hall? You've been in my house. You've stolen a few of mine. I think you have too, but anyway. But they're good. They're, hey, taste and see. God says take a taste of salvation and you'll see salvation is worth every bit of trust that you put in Jesus Christ. Taste and see. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. God says if you trust me, I'll direct your path. But you got to trust me first. But you say, but God, can you just show me the path and then I'll trust you? God says, that's not trust. God says, you just trust me. You just follow me. He says, if you want to get saved, trust me and I'll show you. He says, just trust me. But we say, but God, I've got to see where I'm going. I need to see ahead of me. God says, no, that's not trust. He says, I need you on when you can't see what tomorrow holds. Trust the almighty God that does know the tomorrow. And if you trust that God and follow him, God says, he'll direct every Every step of your path. You may not know where you're going, but God says trust and I'll show you that way. Ladies and gentlemen, we want God to show the way, but God says no, I'll show the way when you trust. You just have to trust the God who believes in you, who loves you, who wants you to go to heaven. Hey, trust him first and he'll show you the way. Years ago, I was flying an airplane and I got caught in the middle of a storm. I was in Arizona area. Got caught in what they call a monsoon storm. Clouds were around me. The tower, Albuquerque Tower, radioed to me. And they said, that I, was, I was flying a Cherokee. And they said, Cherokee, and they gave me my numbers. They said, Cherokee, and they, they read the numbers off. They said, you're about ready to hit a storm. They said, we won't see you in the storm, but we'll hear you. Man, that's not encouraging. I got in that storm and that old plane was bouncing around. The tower couldn't see me in an altimeter. The altimeter shows you what your pitch is of that, of that front of that nose. When you got storms, you got lightning all around you, you got to keep your nose, just your eyes, um, just focused on that VOR and on that altimeter. You don't want to take a dive. I'm telling you right now, going down in a small plane is not a good thing right now. I'm just saying right now. And he says, and, and I had to keep that thing straight. I'm going around just watching that old plant, that old VOR. That thing's a little mechanical. You wonder how in the world could I get it to the storm? Get this now. The tower couldn't get me to the storm with all their technology. But that VOR, that VOR just guided me right through that storm. That altimeter had me on the right height right there. Can I tell you, sometimes you can't see where God is. You just have to trust an almighty God instead of trusting everybody else. Trust the almighty God. God that knows where he's going. You say, but preacher, that's a little old fashioned. Yes, but he's always got you to the destination you need to be at if you just trust him. He says, trust, and I'll direct the path. I look at Calvary. Two crowds were present at Calvary. There was one crowd that mocked the Savior. One said, come down and save thyself and us. That was a thief 
on one side of Jesus, mocking our Savior. The chief priest down here were saying, come down and let us see. They will believe. That was the one crowd. There was one other crowd. He was a lone person. He's hanging on the cross. He's dying. He's a thief. Capital punishment in that day. He's on the cross. He hears his buddy over there on the other side of the Savior mocking the Savior. He says, we are here. Indeed, justly we're here. And this guy on this side of the cross just looked over to Jesus. He says, I'm not going to see and believe. I want to believe and see. And he looked to Jesus and he said, Jesus, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus says, this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. Can I tell you what happened that day? That thief right there, he says, I believe. I believe in Jesus. And can I tell you, when he, when he died and, his, and, his, and, his, and, they, and they, they took him down from that cross, can I tell you, he saw that real place called heaven. You know why? He believed Jesus Christ, put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And that's why he's in heaven right now. Can I tell you right now, that's exactly what it takes for anybody to get saved. You got to have faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. It's not Christ and the baptistry. It's not Christ in the good works. It's not Christ in your church. It's Jesus Christ in him alone and his sacrificial payment on Calvary. Hey, that's the only thing that can save you from your sins. Man says, I want a feeling first. When I get that feeling, I know I'm saved. That thief didn't have a feeling. But he's saved. Preacher, I'm saved because I know one day I was in a car accident and I saw, a, I saw a bright flash. I knew I was in heaven. Then why isn't your life changed? Somebody help me out on that one right there. You mean to tell me you can step into heaven sore and you're still drinking your beer? Come on now. I'm just saying if you really went to heaven, your life would have changed. When you saw the holiness of an almighty God and you saw a wonderful Savior and if God put you back on this earth after stepping into heaven, I guarantee it, your life would be different. I guarantee it, you wouldn't live like the world because you would have seen what heaven is truly like and you say, oh, I've got to live like that because that's where I'm going someday. Can I tell you this morning, many a person wants an experience. They want a feeling. They're basing it on all these things that if I, it's, it's see and believe. I see I have a feeling. I see I had an experience. I see I I got baptized. God says, no, you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and him alone. He says, if you'll trust Jesus Christ, he alone can save you. Just believe Christ and he will save you. Man wants to change life. God says, I'll change the life, but you got to get saved first. Man says, I want to, I want to work for God. And then I'll get saved. God says, no, you get saved. Then you work for me. Believe and see. How easy is it to trust Jesus Christ? He says it's as easy as opening a door. Brother Hall, would you go open a door over there? Just open that door. Let me see how hard this is to open that door. Was that hard? Not even for a Florida boy? You know, they're not, I'm not, he's my son-in-law. I have to kind of help him out a little bit. Not that hard. You mean you just kind of open the door that easy? You think, what, you think, you think Sharon could probably do that? You think it's that easy for her? Yeah, I think so too. You think a blonde? I mean, anyway, but. <laughs> believe. Open the door. You know how easy it is? God says it's easy. You got some water down there? He says, it's easy as drinking some water. Can you drink some? Stand up. They can't see you. They can't see you. Stand up. I hate to wake you up. Go ahead. Drink that water. Is that hard to drink? Yeah. What'd you do? You just kind of put it, you just drink it. God says, that's how easy it is to get saved. You got to believe that Jesus Christ is the water of life. And you got to take that water and believe that if you drink of his, of, his, of his salvation, he can save you from hell. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, thank God for a Savior that says, you just believe. He says, and I'll show you.
what do we have to believe? We have to believe that we're an awful enough sinner that we deserve hell. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are sinners in here? Would you raise your hand? My hand's up. I'm just seeing who all is a sinner in here. Making sure the choir has both hands up. But anyway, yeah, put them down. You know what? It's not hard to believe that we're a sinner. I bet somebody, I bet all of us have done something this week. Somebody lost their temper this week. Somebody help me out. Somebody let a, let a curse word come out. Somebody help me out. Some of you children disobeyed mom and dad. You, yeah. Hey, maybe you cheated in school. And maybe, maybe you, on the job you cheated the boss by, get, by coming in late. Or maybe you left early. I don't know. But we've all done wrong. We've all done sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because that we have sinned, God says there is a payment that has to be made. He says sin is breaking a law. Now, in order to be justified in the eyes of God, that law, there has to be a payment for that. You say, what is the payment? Do I need to go to jail for so many years? Do I have to do a, a, a pilgrimage and, and try to do a million-mile pilgrimage? No, Jesus says the wages of sin is what? Death. God says the only way you could pay for your sin, somebody has to die. He said, but preacher, if I died... And my sins are not paid for. That means I'm going to go to hell. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. But here's the good thing. God says, would you believe me? He says, I want to give you a gift so you don't have to go to hell. And God says, let me make that payment for you. You say, what payment? Someone had to die. And Jesus Christ left heaven and came down to earth. Lived on this earth for 33 years and never sinned one time. And then he died on the cross and he shed his blood and was buried and he rose again. Why? To make a payment for your sins. He says, I want to pay for your sins. And Jesus Christ says, I've made that payment. I was buried. I rose again. He said, I'll offer it to you right now. You just have to receive it. Receive it. It's a gift. I'm giving it to you. You say, how do I receive that gift? You receive that gift by asking Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior. Can I use another illustration I like to use? Let's say I was going down Rockwell down here. Speed limit's 40 miles an hour, right? 40 40 miles an hour. Let's say I just said, you know what? I don't care what these Bethany police think. That's not a smart thing. Let's say I was going about 60 miles an hour down Rockwell. Driving my old Kia K5 right down Rockwell. See what they think about that. All of a sudden, that policeman sees me going about 60 down Rockwell. He flips those lights on, and he wants to have a nice conversation with me. He pulls me over, and he walks up, and he says, Do you know what you're doing? I said, I absolutely do. I was going as fast as I want. He says, Do you know what the speed limit is? He said, I say, I don't care. I'm going to drive as fast as I want. That police would look at me. Well, I tell you what. I want to give you a little note from me because I like you so much. It's called a ticket. And he writes me out a ticket. He says, I so like you so much, I want to see you in court. He writes us out a ticket, even signs his name on it. That's nice of him. Signs his name on it. He says, here you go. I'll see you on this date in court. I go to court. They're at the court. Turn your seat this way, Brother Williams. You're going to be the judge. I come to the judge. I stand before the judge. And the judge asks me, Mr. Domley, um, do you realize you're going 60 miles an hour in a 40? And I say, yes, I do. This judge ain't going to take to that attitude too much. He says, Mr. Domley, because you're going so fast, I want to fine you $500. I said, I don't have that money. I said, but judge, all of a sudden I'm starting to get nervous now. 
all of a sudden, I realize I don't have $500. My son-in-law's taking all of it. <laughs> and I say, but judge, I don't have the money. Would you, can, can, would you just let me get away with it this time? No, you broke the law. The law has to be paid for. He says, you've got to pay that $500. I said, oh. He said, I don't have it. He says, then you've got to go to jail. Are you serious? You're going to send me to jail? Dressed like that? You're going to send me? And all of a sudden, Brother Trimble walks in. You got money on you? That's not 500. You better give that back too, son. He took that real fast. All of a sudden, he walks in. He says, Judge, he says, I know Mr. Domley. He says, I don't want my pastor to go to jail. He says, because I'd like to keep my job. <laughs> he says, is it okay if I just pay his debt for him? So he puts it over there. Then the judge would look at me and say, now, Mr. Domley, you got a choice. You can pay for it yourself and go to jail. You can accept Mr. Trimble's payment for you. Now, the smart thing would be what? Accept the payment. And I say, Judge, I accept it. That's how easy it is. I accept it. And I walk out a free man. Oh, let's turn this around. Let's look at it one other way. God's sitting on the throne. Give me that money back. God finds me a sinner. Sentences me to hell. The wages of sin is death. Someone's got to die. And I said, but I, I, don't, I can't pay for my sin. He says, you've got to go to, you go to hell. Uh, but I don't want to go to hell. He says, that's not the point. He says, the sin has to be paid for. And all of a sudden, Jesus Christ, come on in. This is the worst Savior I've ever seen in my entire life. Not with them talks on. But anyway, he walks in. And he says to God the Father, he says, I'm Christ. He says, I've paid for this man's sins with my life. If he will accept my payment, I will, I will make that payment for him. He gives the payment to, Christ, to God the Father. And I look at God the Father. And I say, Can I, I'll just get baptized instead. I really don't want to have to. No, no. But I, I, let, me, let me do this. How about if I just live good? No. How about if I just put some money in the offering plate? How about me turning my life around first? You mean I got to believe in him? That's it. Just believe in his payment, what he's done for me, and I can go to heaven. Is that what you're saying? And I say, okay. I believe it. And he gives me the gift of eternal life. My sins are paid for. And as long as I live, I'm headed for heaven. Because I accepted the payment of Jesus Christ for my sins. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, I come to you this morning. I don't know who you are. But can I say this morning, you're not saved because of the church that you're a member of. And you're not saved because you're here. And you're not saved because you've been baptized in a baptistry. If you're saved this morning, it's because you've asked Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior. Years ago, I'll tell you this story and I'll be done. I said to my mama, I said, Mama, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I looked at my mama and I said, Mama, what do I do? And she showed me that Christ died for my sins, was buried and rose again. That night she says, son, if you'll put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to save you, he will save you. That night, and I lived in Conway, South Carolina, I knelt down beside my couch. That night I said to Jesus, I said, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I'm on my way to hell. Right now I accept your payment on the cross as the payment of my sins. Come into my heart and save me and take me to heaven when I die. And that night... When I said that to Christ and I believed in Christ, I saw. I was saved. 
Seems gone. Because I believed first. Then I saw, where are you to this morning? Are you trying to see first before you believe? Or are you going to say, preacher, this morning, I want to believe Christ. Trust Him. Him alone to save me. Then why don't you do that this day? Father, I'm glad you did not make salvation that difficult. All I've got to do is believe. Just have to believe. Simple. Put my trust in thee and thee alone to save me. And you will save me. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed.